Been glad to bring before you our pastor and general overseer, the apostle, Pastor Geno Jennings. <clears throat> Greetings again, brothers and sisters. We thank the one true living God for his divine wisdom, his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and the true teacher of all holy prophets and of all <clears throat> holy apostles. Most of all, we are blessed and very fortunate to be in God's way, which is the way of holiness, revealed to his servants for our learning. I am very grateful for our extended family here in Houston, Texas, and for the many viewers that are watching internationally. We thank God moreover for the hand of God that's just moving through this country and around the world with one message, and that is be holy as God is holy. At a beautiful meeting last night, 91 went down in water. <coughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, and one came out of the water speaking in tongues. That the Spirit of God give out of us. So, our purpose, brothers and sisters, uh, everybody want me to <laughs> start church everywhere. And we are looking to start something in Houston, and we're looking to find a place. And we're looking to find a place and do like we do everywhere in the country. We'll find a place that we are temporarily rent so we can be able to house God's people until we find a place permanent because the Lord certainly is coming and we're making preparations to meet God. And those that repent of their sins and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ after they repented, have made the first step to commit their ways in the hands of God. God willing, Houston, I hope to see as many of you as possible at the closing year convention. Jot it down, December 27th through December 31st is our closing year service, as well as our end of the year holy convocation. December 27th through December 31st. Now, you know many of you used to party to bring the New Year's in, hanging out there with your wicked friends and out there with your father, the devil. Well, God has given you a new family, a godly family. You know, I listen at the different testimonies, as some of you said, Family turn on you, friends turn on you. Well, that's all right. God will give you a spiritual family. <clears throat> you know, it tickles me when I travel and I hear so many people, they always say how they hated my voice. <laughs> what is it about my voice that you hate so bad? Well, most people have never heard or seen a preacher that's in your face about your dirt. We're used to doing wrong and no one say nothing, or if they do say something, they're not forward with it. They are pacified. God sent a man to tell you what you need to hear and to tell you the way you ought to hear it. One thing about this message, it comes so forcible, so strong, it gets your attention, make you think deeper than you ever thought before, make you consider your lifestyle, make you face the reality of where you're headed, how you're destroying yourself, how you're killing yourself, how you're abusing your body, and a lot of times we don't look at ourselves as abusing our body because we're having so much fun in what we're doing. But it doesn't change the fact 
Your body is the temple of the living God and anything you do with your body that's opposite from the will of God, you are abusing your temple. God wants you for him. That's right. And God made my mouth like an alarm clock. Yeah. And he got it ringing. Mm -hmm. Glory to God down in this wicked earth to arouse the conscience of men and women of every race on the earth before he come burn this earth up. Mm. And you bear in mind, he's going to burn heaven and earth. Oh, yeah. He's going to remove this present heavens and this present earth. He's going to wipe it out. Oh, yeah. And before he wipe it out, he's given everybody a fair chance to get their life right with him. Mm. That's a privilege within itself. God looked at something worthless like us and showed mercy. Think of it the way you were out there in the street. You could be dead. Many of our friends are dead. Shot up, stabbed, OD'd, car accident, drank themselves to death, died young. And many of us done the exact same thing. So ask yourself, why are you still living? Amen. Friends got shot. You got shot. You lived. They didn't. Friends got stabbed. You got stabbed. You lived. They didn't. Friends OD died. You OD still alive. Why? It wasn't because there's anything so good about us. It is because God Almighty decided to give you an extension. Mm. Glory to God to give you a chance to get right with him. The mercy of God see our ending that we don't see. We could have been cut off or about to be cut off. And God Almighty have made so many millions run up on this program. Many thought it was a mistake when they ran up on the truth of God. Many people have said they don't know how they came up on it. People have ran up on this message in the most strangest ways. <clears throat> One way stand out to me, there was a woman that wrote me and said she was cooking and she had a recipe for some type of meat and uh, she wanted to make sure she get it right. So she Googled Meat. <laughs> she Googled meat and I came up. <laughs> you know that had to be God, man. <laughs> and she said she thought I was a chef. She never heard of me. <laughs> so she mashed the video and the very message that came on. I was talking about having a spiritual diet. Mm. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats. Lord. When she heard that message, she forgot all about her recipe. <laughs> came to one of the meetings and got baptized in water. For it take God in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was in uh, Port Smith, Virginia. I think it was last week. Oh no, week before last. And my, uh, there was a pilot, an airline pilot from Australia uh, who fly back and forth from Australia to Singapore and other Asiatic countries. And he said he never heard of me in his life. He just was wondering about who is God. So he Googled. He just typed in the word God. I came up. I'm not God. But just so happy when I came up, the message that came up, I was breaking down the Godhead. Yeah. He said it answered every question he ever had in his life. He told my secretary, he sent the email, I read it. He said, I'll be flying from Australia in December to Philadelphia to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Why is so many people coming from the four corners of the earth? Can't you not see Houston? Something is going on in the earth. Yeah. It's the hand of God that's moving. 
in every state, city, town, village, country. This is the message for the last days. And that message is get your house in order. Get your house in order. We're living in a time now where the climate of hate towards God is forever growing. Politicians who pretend to be Christians but justify every kind of filth under the sun. Preachers who pretend to be messengers of God but yet too scared to tell you what God wants you to do to keep you out of hell. Parents today don't want to be parents to their children. Fathers want to be their son's big brother. Mothers want to be their daughter's big sister. Our generation of parents are getting younger and younger. Children having children. The uh, social media have every form of madness out here. And the government is catering to wickedness. And if you stand up for God, you might get thrown in jail. You know, that's the way the government is aiming for now. Like they have this homosexual thing now, and they're trying to make businesses be compliant with not just a men's room and a ladies' room, but a, but a transgender bathroom. Amen. That's for men uh, who say they're women, and that's for women who say they're men. Well, any property owned, bought, Built by the truth of God, there will only be two bathrooms. One for men, one for women. You will let me catch a man trying to wander in one of our ladies' rooms. Glory to God, we'll scoop you up and give you revelation. <laughs> the world is in a pitiful predicament. Oh, yeah. Many people ask me, Pastor Jennings, aren't you afraid something's going to happen to you? No. Mm -mm. God Almighty is with us. If God wasn't with me, and you think I would stand so bold and speak so loud against the governments of the world and against the religious deception, all of us were deceived by some kind of religion That's right. sometime in our life. And we don't realize how blind, deaf, and dumb we are or were until God began to deal with you. When God deal with you and open your understanding, you are amazed at your own ignorance. You even have to say, you mean to tell me I was that dumb? <laughs> you mean to tell me I believe this? I used to believe that. Well, a lot of our parents done the best they could. They taught us what they knew. But God's knowledge is broader than our father and mothers. Oh, yeah. The knowledge of God is designed to lead us to him. That's why I tell all television viewers, ignore my voice. People all over YouTube. One man said, it ain't no human being got a voice like that. He done something to it. <laughs> <laughs> Another man made a comment. His voice must be, how he put it? Computerized, animated, something. No, it's, it's me. It's mine. That's right. God made my mouth big like this and forcible. That's my right. mouth is too big for my body. Amen. But God Almighty Hallelujah. brings out a loud sound. Hallelujah. Different from what people are used to hearing. Amen. There's no sugar. Can't get us mixed up with nobody. We point you to God's everlasting word. We're like that dog in your next door neighbor's yard that keep you up when you want to sleep. You throw shoes out the window. You yell out the window. And the dog keep you up. Well, God made me a loud barking preacher. And you throw your lies and whatever because you want me to stop making this sweet Holy Ghost noise. Because it's interrupting your second marriage. It's interrupting your shacking up. It's interrupting your homosexual lifestyle. It's interrupting the wealthy bourgeoisie preachers who've been robbing the people out of millions for years. That's right. It's interrupting the devil's playground. And God knows 
We're going to continue to do this. That's right. If God be our helper. That's right. All right, let's dive into the Bible. Let's dive, dive, dive. 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 Amen. The Bible is the book of pain. Amen. And I want to say to my extended family here in Houston, just give me some time. God willing, uh, once we find a place where we are temporary rent and we're going to get right on it, my secretary will get right on it. It'll be announced on our social media website, on our church website. So pay attention and be looking. Be looking every day. And everybody will be notified the date and the time and we'll come back. And let your family know, let your friends know, let the false prophet know that you left. That's right. Oh, amen. Let them know. In fact, tell them to come with you. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the second service is going on today in Detroit uh, after our temporary location there. And I want to say to Chicago, I haven't forgot about you. We're still trying to find a place to get all of you together also. I'm so glad to see how God is sending just a tidal wave mm -hmm. through the country and preachers. Now, when I travel in different places, preachers now <clears throat> are sending memos out to other preachers, encouraging them to have church on Saturday when I come to the area to try to keep their members from coming to the services. Isn't that something? You know that that goes to show you even the preachers are desperate because when they see the people start leaving, their, their, their food is leaving. Uh, and the llama beans is walking out and their pork chops and their chicken and their fish and their collard greens and turnips. Now he got to get a real job and go to work. And he don't want to work. He want to live off the people. But my God, this word going to put you right or put you in the lake of fire because you don't want to be right. That's right. All right. Now, let, let, let me straighten something out from last night. I, I mentioned in reference to the Apostle Paul, you know, a lot of folks say, well, if there are apostles now, then everybody would be healed. Like I said last night, that's not the truth. And I, well, I mentioned about the scripture where Apostle Paul, he was in a certain location and he mentioned how he left one brother sick. And script, Williams read a scripture in the book of Philippians, but it was the wrong scripture. Right. I want 2 Timothy chapter, chapter four. 4 and verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and that verse 20. Because a lot of preachers say that the apostles everywhere they went, everybody got healed. That is not the truth. Right. Because the apostles weren't healers. God is the healer. That's right. As I said moreover, a preacher can pray over you, but if God don't heal you, well, there's nothing a preacher can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not going to blow on you. <laughs> Amen. And I'm not going to grab you and push you on the floor. No. Amen. If God don't knock you down there, then you may remain standing. That's but it. if God do knock you down there, then I'm going to let God get you up because I'm not picking you up. That's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Come on, William. Second Timothy chapter 4 and at verse 20. Let me straighten that out quickly now. All right. Arrest us a boat at Corinth. Erascus, he stayed at Corinth. But Trophimus, but Trophimus, have I left at Miletum sick? I left Trophimus at Miletus sick. I sick. left him there sick. So that lets you know not even the apostles, everywhere they went, everybody got healed. The apostle Paul went to the location, he left one of the brothers sick. sick. That lets you know that no man is a healer. That's right. God is a healer. That's right. Amen. I remember when the apostles went somewhere. And uh, they prayed for a gentleman, I believe, who was lame from birth. Mm -hmm. And the man was healed. And the people want to offer sacrifices to the apostles mm -hmm. as if they'd done this. And the apostles told them, no, 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 we didn't do this. Didn't do this. It wasn't like by our power. No, no. Uh -uh. This is done by the power of God. This great message of holiness is not about Pastor Jennings. Amen. Right. It's not about Pastor Jennings at all. I'm just a servant, That's it. a student, a puppet. Amen. I'm nothing but a puppet. There's, there's nothing so special about me at all. I'm just a puppet used by a great master. When he pulled the strings of my mouth and that mouth come open. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take God. Go ahead. I got the buck out God word. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So you know, there is no puppet that do what he wants to do. Huh? Amen. The puppet do what the master say you do. That master pull the string, the puppet raises his hand and hits you. Yeah. Pull the string again, 
hit you again. That's right. So the God of heaven done pulled the string of the gospel and got me hitting every religion under the sun that's not holy. Amen. And I want to say to everyone that's here this afternoon, on this Sunday afternoon here in Houston, Texas, that have not obeyed the word of God, whatever church you come from, whatever church you are a member of, I don't care about your position. If you're the pastor, assistant pastor, junior deacon, there's no junior deacons in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, if you're a junior elder, there's no junior elders in the Bible. No. If you're a junior pastor, there's no junior pastors in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you're a missionary woman, there's no woman in the history of the Bible that's called a missionary. That's right. So I want to get you off your mission and bring you right here to God's everlasting word. Amen. And I didn't know the Bible straightened out everything, everything. don't it? Oh, yes. Pastor Jenner, do you mean missionary not in the Bible? No. No. You've been conned, you've been bamboozled, That's you've right. been led astray. Mm -hmm. Many of this stuff that have been taught is the tradition of men. That's right. The mothers, the older women in the church, and the young women in the church, the Bible plainly tell us what to call them. First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me, Houston. This is a wake-up call. Alarm. Amen. Alarm. Alarm! That's right. Lord, thank God I want to stir you up until when the benediction is given, you can hear this voice all down in your gut <laughs> telling you what the word of God said. Amen. Follow me. I want, I want this to be good in case I got any missionaries here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you Houston missionaries. First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. Rebuke not an elder. Rebuke not an elder. But entreat him as a father. Entreat him as a father. And the younger men as brethren. And what should we call the younger men? The younger men as brethren as brothers the elder women what should we call the elder women as mothers all right where do you get a missionary from amen and what should we call the young women the younger as sisters with all purity so the older women are called mothers mothers and the young are called sisters sisters you don't have nowhere in the bible where our women were called missionaries. And next thing you know, women are getting up, supposed to be preaching on Women's Day and a Women's Day service and a Women's Day sermon. And you got all these women up preaching. And when the folks came here and preach against this, they say, that man, he must really hate women. I don't hate women. We have thousands of women following us. I don't hate women. That's I'm right. married to a woman. That's I right. sure ain't married to no man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing made on me for a man, buddy. No, no. Glory to God to the highest. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just want to put everything in order no and way. show you how the tradition of men. Mm -hmm. I, I want to work on this. On in the book of I want to work on the tradition of men. men. And I want to compare, Houston, mm -hmm. I want you to hear. I want to compare what church tradition have today with the Bible. Is that all right? Amen. That'll give you a better insight and a better understanding of what is Bible and what is not Bible. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go to church and read and sing and cry and my fake eyelashes get loose and my mascara run down my cheeks and get in the corner of my mouth. I don't want that. No. Glory to God, I want to know what I'm doing. That's right. I don't want to wish up God in ignorance. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to go to church and work in church, I at least should know what I'm doing. That's right. And when I die, I want to die or be dying with confidence that all my teaching that I receive will get me into the kingdom of God. That's right. Yeah? That's right. Think of it. Teaching will do two things. Teaching will either save you or damn you. That's why I'm hard on preachers laying in the Bible. Amen. We don't believe in philosophy and seminary school and all of that rubbish that come out of hell and crept in church. That's right. All right, son, let's go to work. In Everybody the, follow me now. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 7, we'll start at verse 1. Yes. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, uh -huh. which came from Jerusalem. Yes. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say with unwashing hands, uh -huh. they found fault. Give chapter and verse again. St. Mark, chapter 7, now we're at verse 2. Uh -huh. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. All right. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands 
off eat not, mm -hmm. holding the tradition of the elders. Yes. And when they were come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots Bible and vessels says, and of tables. Thus, then the Pharisees. I want you to listen at this real good. Now in Mark chapter 7, we're at verse 5. Then the Pharisees. And the scribes asked. Asked Jesus. Why spoke not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? That's, it, it, people ask me the same thing. Hmm. Pastor Jenny, why you don't do certain things in your church that other churches do? Hmm. You know, why you don't sell ticket, tickets and ticket. why you don't have performers coming in the church and you can raise money you know you you want to build all these churches well you know you can get you know some entertainers come in and yeah. you can have maybe a christian comedian come <laughs> in and sell tickets at the door pastor jennings and yeah. you know all them church buses you got why don't you rent them out to people so they can go to las vegas and mm. and to the casinos in new jersey and all Pastor Jennings, you can make millions. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then after I do it, I end up going to hell over a dollar. That's right. Glory to God, I cannot sin to get one dime. That's right. He that gather riches and not by right, the word say you are dire fool. Amen. Even when I make money, I can't make it violating the word of God. That's right. Because then my money will be a witness against me. You will find that in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. The apostles went on down to Samaria after Philip the evangelist went down there and preached the word of God and people got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then the apostles came in town and laid hands on the people and they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. But there was one wicked fella named Simon the sorcerer. And when Simon saw, listen at this, in the book of Acts chapter 8 and at verse 18, when Simon saw that, that through the laying on the of the laying apostles, on hands, hands of the apostles the Holy Ghost was given that the people received the Holy Ghost he offered them money he offered them money saying give me also this power that old, old wicked Simon the saucer offered the apostles money, money money because he wanted to buy the Holy Ghost that on whomsoever I lay hands he may that receive the Holy Ghost he lay hands on he did receive the Holy Ghost. But look how the apostles laid Simon out. But Peter said unto him, huh? Thy money perish with thee. That's what I'm telling folk. Amen. I don't care how rich you are. Your mm -hmm. money won't save you. Thy money perish with thee. Your money will perish with you because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. God's word is not for sale. That's right. The truth of the gospel is not for sale. Mm -hmm. If you want to buy it, the greatest thing you can give is your life. That's it. Think of it. God wants your life. Mm -hmm. He wants your life. Those eyes that you have, that you used to go to strip clubs <laughs> and look at some foolish woman come down a pole and walk on her hands and knees and then come down off the stage, give you a lap dance, and then you throw your money in the air and make it rain and you so foolish, now you ain't got enough money to buy milk for your child, pamper for your babies, yeah. food to put in your house. You're broke. Mm. You're so broke you can't even catch a cab. That's right. You know you's a fool and a good fool. Thy money perish with thee. And here you got some women now doing the same thing because you got club for women. Oh, yeah. Here's an ignorant, hell-bound, body-building fool. <laughs> Get up on a stage with gold shorts, yeah. shaking his anatomy in a bunch of loose women faces. Mm. And, and, and they're sitting right there laughing and giggling, gigg giggling. That's why the Bible says silly women, silly women, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, he has sit out there and put his hands on his head and shake his private so. parts and you get joy, sicking money down in the strap of his tongue of For a head. pervert. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. The Holy Ghost says. Thy money perish with thee. See, the preachers won't preach this because they go to clubs themselves. Amen. Ah! Amen. You're a fine, you're a fine bishop. You're a fine the elder and the pastor sitting back in a black suit with his <laughs> collar on backward, sitting back looking around. That's right. See, do anybody recognize him? Head tucked down in the chair. That's right. That's the devil out of hell. Amen. Are oh, you listening to the old troublemaker? Thy money perish with thee. I don't care how much money you have. You didn't when you was born. You didn't have it. No. Amen. 
Your money going to perish with thee, with you, because thou hast thought that the, gift, thought of the God gift of God may be purchased with may money. Be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. You hear? Look out, Peter. Peter laying this Simon the sorcerer out. Mm. He said that you have no part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in Wait the sight. Wait a minute. Thy heart. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. That's what I'm telling the world. Heart is not right. Houston. Houston. Texas, yeah. the whole state, glory mm. to God, heart is wrong. Heart is not right. Amen. Your heart is not right, and God has given you an opportunity to get your heart right. Repent. You have come out of your, look, look at it. Look at what he told Simon. Repent. Yes, sir. Repent. Do what? Repent. That's what I'm telling you. Repent. Thank God you got to repent now. Get out your club, That's woman. It. Woman, have some self-love and self-respect. That's right. God didn't make your body to be advertised. That's right. God didn't make you to advertise your breasts, your womb, your backside, your thighs. Yeah. God didn't make you to advertise your back. That's Put right. some clothes on you. Amen. Amen. You get these deep cut necks and get a tattoo right on your breasts. breasts. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And then when a man looking down at your clothes, you pretend like you want to cover it up. That's right. Yet you get a tattoo right on your breast, and you know if you move a certain way, you make your tattoo move. That's right. Eh? Amen. Tattoo just saying, here am I. Here am I. <laughs> That's and right. then a moment he's a peeping Tom, you like, you old pervert. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why you got a tattoo and then got your blouse dropped deep as my jacket? That's what right. do you think he gonna do? Look up. Amen. You don't want him. Hey, hey, listen, listen. If you don't, look, Thanksgiving is coming. So if you don't want him to look at your turkey, dress it. That's right. Eh? Go ahead. Dress it up, I said. Go ahead. Am I right, man? Go ahead, take God. Go ahead, take. God. Repent. Repent. Repent, therefore, of this Hallelujah thy wickedness. Say, God, repent of your wickedness. And pray God. Pray God. If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. You hear this? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wicked thoughts, thoughts. in our heart. That's, right. That's why we're in these clubs so long. And wives got to argue with their husband. The moment he get a check, he <laughs> ride by his house. Yeah. Drink it all up. Smoke it all up. <clears throat> sit in the club with their friends. <clears throat> Children can't eat. Wife can't eat. Amen. He's out there partying. You know, God is so merciful. Oh, yeah. They see so many men out here living like animals, abusing women. Amen. Abusing somebody's daughter. Amen. Some of these young girls now are being pimped out by men. That's right. Some of these young girls are being pimped out by their own father. That's right. Being pimped out by your own uncle. That's right. Amen. Being pimped out by their own pastor. That's right. Eh? That's right. Being pimped out by the church deacon. Amen. Glory to God, you see, holiness touch everything. That's right. Why? Why do we touch everything? Because the world is headed for hell. You wouldn't think Jesus ever walked the earth. No. The way that people are acting like, and these are church people. Oh, yeah. Church people now, amen, they don't want to follow the word of God. They use the Bible as a, uh, just masquerade. That's it. To, to hide behind. That's right. And then so they can say they're Christian. You can look at practically every gay parade yeah. anywhere in America or out. Practically 85 or 90 percent in that parade going to say they're Christians. That's right. Amen. Almost 85 or 90 percent of the parade right. say they're Christians. Uh, rainbow flags now. Mm. All on churches. All on homes. Mm. <clears throat> when I went to the hotel, got back to my hotel last night, <clears throat> and the brothers, we got on the, uh, we was waiting for the elevator to come down, and there was three fellas. And they all had on navy blue suits, you know, and, and uh, they had on, two of them had on men's shoes. One had on a two-piece navy blue suit and woman heel shoes, sparkly shoes. Shoes look like real, like glitter. My Lord. And he walked around and standing there waiting on the elevator with his pumps, <laughs> moving his feet around. My Lord, my Lord. I looked at the pumps, looked at him. Looked at the pumps, looked at him. He just standing there talking. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. 
This is how society, society is so messed up now. They look at that. You know what they say? Well, Pastor Jenna, what's wrong with that? Right. To each his own. That's and right. these are men talking like this. That's right. That's right. Our big feet wasn't designed for women's shoes. No. Are you listening? Amen. Our big feet were not designed for women's shoes. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? Do you hear? I'm that, I'm that dog next door. That's right. Barking this. That's right. Do you hear this? Deuteronomy chapter 22 and at verse 5. What is it? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Wait a minute. Why in the world our women want to look like men? What is it? What is it? What is it? When you see a woman walking up the street, you should know it is a woman. You shouldn't think it's a man. No. Lord, thank God our women today walking up the street. <laughs> our men walking up the street. That's right. That's right. Our women standing on the corner waiting for a bus. Our men on the corner waiting for a bus. Am I right, sir? Amen. Lord, help the people. Right away. Hmm. Lord, take God when you tell people what's right, they look at you and get upset and tip out and walk out because they got uh, homosexuals in their family. That don't change the Bible. No. It's still wrong. That's right. I got homosexual relatives in my family. They ain't going to change the Bible. Right. It was here before they were born. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank God I'm going to stand on it or, else, or die trying. That's right. Imagine Pastor Jennings coming here, amen, with ballerina pump looking shoes and <laughs> a pink suit, mm. tiptoeing in the pulpit. <laughs> Brothers introducing me, we bring before you our brother and our leader and our teacher and our guide, <laughs> our apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings, and I come in the pulpit, hey, <laughs> hey, anybody want to get baptized? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, right, sir? Amen. Oh, that's, the, that's the time you need to step to Pastor Jennings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glory to God, I have to wake you up. I Amen. have to wake creation up. Amen. Thanks be unto God, I have to do it because this spirit of homosexuality is in elementary school, middle school, high school, the college universities, Amen. and they are destroying our young people. That's right. Turning our boys into girls and our girls into boys. Amen. And you know who's promoting it just as much as the center? Churches. That's right. Churches. That's right. All right, thank God. That's why in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. In other words, you got so-called houses of God. They don't really represent God. They have a satanic agenda. Oh, yeah. They just talk about God as a front. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they have a satanic agenda agenda. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the book of Mark quickly now. I want to work on tradition of men. All right. Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 5. Follow me. Why walk not thy disciples according to the, tra according according to to the, the tradition, tradition of the elders? Of the elders. They bread with unwashing hands. Yeah. He answered and said unto them, well hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. Look at Jesus. And they get on me for calling names. Amen. What did Jesus say? Hippo well hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. No, Jesus called them Christians. Hypocrites. I have to call you what you are. Hypocrites. A hypocrite is a faker. That's right. Uh -huh. As it is written. As it is written. This people honoreth me with their lips. This is the problem, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. The people honor God with their lips. All around the world, you hear people talk about, I love Jesus. Jesus this. 
Jesus that, Jesus the other. But when you look at what they believe mm -hmm. and compare it with what Jesus said, mm -hmm. man, if Jesus will walk the streets of America, he'll close these churches down. They profess that they know God. Do you hear this? In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and at uh, rather This is the book of Titus. Rather in Titus chapter 1 and Titus verse 16. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess that they know God. They claim <clears throat> that they know God. But in works, in works, they deny him. Don't they? Amen. So going to church is not enough. I, some folks say, I go to church, I'm a good Christian. It doesn't matter because you go to church. Roaches go to church. Yeah. That's why it's hard to get rid of them. Yeah. Go to church and spend a night and make more. Mm -hmm. So because you go into church, being a Christian is bigger than going to some church. That's Anybody right. can go to church. That's right. The Bible says they profess that they know God, but in works, in works, they deny him. All right, now, are you denying God mm -hmm. in your lifestyle? We claim that we know God. Amen. But when it comes to works, they deny him. You got a Bible under your arm, but when it comes to works, they deny him. You say you love Jesus, but when it comes to works, they deny him. Sometimes what makes us deny him is because we are loyal to bad teaching. That's right. Bad teaching has gotten our blood. Thank God and messed up our spiritual DNA. That's right. And now we become misrepresentatives of God everlasting word. And mm -hmm. we get it all wrong. A lot of us are sincere, mm -hmm. mean well, but many of these preachers have pumped our brains oh, yeah. with theology, mm -hmm. philosophy, <clears throat> good sounding words, motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. They're not gospel teachers. They are nothing but motivational speakers. That's right. Anytime God sent a man, the word of God is to reach down in your soul and then give you a desire to turn from your wrong. That's right. Motivational speakers just make you feel good. <laughs> they just feel good. Bishop, feel me all over. Amen. Feel good. Yeah. Hey man, you feel happy and you clap a little bit and whatnot and smile. And, and then you and your wife, second wife, third wife, fourth wife leave the church. You and your girlfriend go back home and commit fornication, living together, not married. You go back, get in your car, light up your pot, drive back home, smoking your weed, smiling. They said, man, he really put it down today, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eh? Amen. Why? You motivated. Yeah, That's you right. motivated, all right. Oh, yeah. But you never mo motivated to do God's will. That's right. That's the difference between artificial church and a motivational speaker in the pulpit yeah. who pretends to be a preacher. Amen. A lot of folk don't know what a preacher is. Mm. A preacher is a messenger of God. He's not a messenger of a university. He's not a messenger of a college. He's not a messenger of a school. And he's not a messenger of his own opinion. That's like right. God sent, God made, God anointed, God taught, God authorized preacher is a messenger of God and nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else, I said. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. What did he say? They profess that they know God. They claim. That they know God, but in works. They deny him. Glory to God, they deny him. Being abominable. Being abominable. And disobedient. And they're hard head. The preachers seem like they're more hard head than the people. Yeah. You can show the preacher, look, the Bible says this. You know what he has said? Well, look, I have had preachers tell me, Pastor Jennings, I know what you're preaching is right, but my organization won't let me do it. Can you imagine that? Hmm. That's why we're telling people all over the world, switch loyalty. That's right. You should be more loyal to God than you are to any organization on the planet. That's right. If an organization make you wrong, I don't care if the Church of God in Christ, Church of the Living God, PAW, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, UPCI, UPCA, UPCO, UPC, whatever they call themselves. Whatever organization you in, and you see that organization contradict the Bible, that make you a hypocrite when you know better, but yet you do what the organization said and turn your back on God. There's no organization coming back for nobody. The Lord oh. himself. That's right. Or oh, take God shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of an archangel. Right. Thank God the dead in Christ shall rise. So yes, your loyalty got to be to God. Mm -hmm. 
more than an organization. You got to be so loyal to God until if that woman preached, you get up and preach. And you know the Bible said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man, but to be in silence with all subjection. When you're loyal to the book, the moment she get up, you will get out. That's right. Why? Your loyalty to the book. That's right. Your loyalty to the book. Mm -hmm. Amen. When that preacher come and behind your back and tell your wife, why, Sister Cunningham, you got the calling. And he makes some fake tongue. He tell about shop top, Peter Piker, pick a pepper. <laughs> Going to tell you and your wife, <clears throat> your wife got the calling. I see it on her, you old liar. That's a lie. The only calling that she got is unto repentance. That's right. God have never called a woman to preach the gospel since God been God. Amen. <laughs> The reason why these preachers use women in the pulpit, he used them to raise money. Yeah. Because even the preacher know, women can raise money better than men. Mm -hmm. So he had given them all kind of titles. First lady, second lady, amen. The, the prince, princess lady, and missionary this, the missionary the other. Call her everything. everything. Long as she'll bring in that plate of money for the false prophet. That's right. In other words, the preachers got to the point they pimp the women in the church. Yeah. They say, Pastor Jennings, he don't preach. He fuss. You call it what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm like your grandparents. You yeah. know, when young parents spoil their children, let them get away with everything. And then when the children is hard head, sometimes mother and father say, all right, you keep it up. We're going to take you to grandma's house. Right then that child looked distressed. <laughs> Why? Because that child know I, there's things I can't get away with at grandma and grandpa's house like I can here because grandma and grandpa lay rules. That's right. You can't go in the refrigerator unless you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Get your feet off that couch. Mm -hmm. Sit down and stop acting like you ain't got good sense. Get off that phone. Stop sitting in television all day. Get a book. Read. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In other words, grandparents take the child back to old school. We're in a lot of our young people, you don't want to be bothered with your children, so sometimes you sit on the phone all day talking to Cynthia, Sally, Martha, this one and the other, and the child can sit there on the phone all day. A three-year-old child reach for your cell phone and play on your phone all day. And then by the time the child gets six, he's so hypnotized by the cell phone, he's walking around. All day, That's right. walking into cars. <laughs> if you go into a supermarket or on the street, hardly nobody walk with their head up. No. Everybody. <laughs> About to walk into cars, trucks, walls, buildings, everything. That's right. Glory to God, I want people to come on back to what the word of God says so I can stir up your conscience. That's right. What did he say? They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we don't want. We don't want to claim we know God, but when it comes time to perform, our actions are saying we are denying who we profess. That's right. Knowledge is power. This is why we take our time and labor and teach and teach and teach and teach to give you a better comprehension of the book. That's right. Go on to church. That's why you hear me say over the air, follow me in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Follow me in the Bible. Yeah. Follow me in the Bible. Because I don't want you to take things face value. We want you to see what we're telling you come right from the word of God. That's right. Uh -huh. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. All right. Being abominable. Being that abominable. And disobedient. And hard head. And unto every good work. What is it? Reprobate. All right, let's go back to the book of Mark. Back in Mark chapter 7 and at verse 6. Uh -huh. He answered and said unto them, Well, as his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. Of you hypocrites. As it is written. Yes. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And. Now be it in vain. Oh, no glory to God. They honor God with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Have you, have you met some people, they so hyped in church. You can't, they can't, you can't even have a conversation about a car engine without them saying hallelujah. <laughs> hey, brother, how you doing? Hallelujah, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, man. Brother, man. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hey, brother, you going to school? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to school. Hallelujah. <laughs> Overzealous. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, you learn holiness, when you learn holiness, when you learn what God really wants out you, <laughs> it, that, that zeal will calm down. Yes, it will. Because, brother, when you come into the knowledge of what God wants, living for God is a rough, hard life. Oh, yeah. Because God asked me to surrender everything 
And if I'm asked to surrender everything, then I'm asked to give up those things that I love. That's right. And you know you don't want to stop doing what, what put a smile on your face. That's right. Huh? No. Has that man been with that girl for 10 years? Fornicating every day. He can't even wait till he get off work. <laughs> Running red lights. <laughs> come, she meet him downstairs. In the, and uh, before she even, he even get to the apartment, she meet him downstairs. <laughs> all on the steps. <clears throat> pressing up against other people buzzer. They think someone ringing a buzzer to their apartment. That's right. Then the Lord God of heaven tell you you are fornicator. Fornicator. He's like, what? Say what? <laughs> fornicator. That's right. Mm -hmm. This people honors me with their lips. And yet he say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. They profess that they know God. He say you're a Christian. That's right. He say he a Christian. She says she a Christian. They go, they go to some church. That's right. Drive together, live together, not married. Mm -hmm. But the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians said mm -hmm. to avoid, avoid fornication. I want everybody to follow me. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7. seven. And beginning follow at me. verse 1. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me real good. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we're at verse 1. What did God say? Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. Only God can think like this because a man won't. No. Concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, uh -huh. it is good for a man not to touch a woman. There ain't no man gonna say that. No. Paul ain't even said that. No. Only God think like that. Amen. What did God say? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. And I want to say to my black brothers that are watching who think a bunch of white Europeans just got together because they was bored and wrote the Bible, not even a European going to put that in there. No way. <laughs> eh? no, no. Ain't no European going to put that in there. Uh -uh. What? Get chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 1. First Corinthians 7 and 1 says, It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Uh-oh. It is God good. God talking. Good. Pastor Jennings wouldn't even put that in there. No. No, I won't, I won't write that. Uh -uh. If I would have wrote that, I wouldn't have no seven kids. No. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey Amen. I ain't going to say it's good for a man not, not to, to touch a woman. Not to touch a woman. Hey Amen. Uh, but the Lord says. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now tell us why God put that in there. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To do what? Avoid fornication. To do what? To avoid fornication. What type of law did God make? Let every man have his own wife. All right. If the Lord said let every man have his own wife, how is it you got rid of your wife and got somebody else's? Amen. That's not your own. Your own. That's, That's not your own. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his I own wife. I want this wife. to be good for every young person in here and every young person that are watching that's looking at me now. I know some of you looking at me now around the world. You laying right up in bed with your girlfriend looking at Pastor Gino. Some of you write me and say, well, Pastor Gino, you tell it like it is. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh-huh. All right, sister. You may as well get out that bed, put some clothes on, that's and right. go home. That's right. That's right. Young man, that woman ain't your wife. Mm -hmm. Get your hands off her backside. Amen. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You ain't got to be rubbing her hair, rubbing her face, your tongue in her mouth. Ah, 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 ah. The God of heaven is talking here. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. See, you won't hear that in Joel Austin church. Oh, no. Joel Austin is say, you know, I saw my daughter and... And... She said, Dad, look at the eggs. And from the eggs, I got a message from the shell. No. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. You claim you're a Christian? Claim. Mm. In works, you deny every deny. time you fornicate. Every time you do it. Right. Your deed is denying, denying. God. That's right. That's right. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. But what? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. That's why some folks say, well, Pastor Jennings, I come visit you when you come in town, but man, ain't going to be a part of that stuff. It's just too rough for me. <laughs> I didn't write the book. Amen. Folks, folks treat this as if I wrote it. That's right. If it was left up to me, there wouldn't be no Bible. It wouldn't be no Bible. <laughs> 
If it were left up to Pastor Janice, it wouldn't be no Bible at all. <laughs> Amen. Folks put a lie out and said, I wrote the Bible. I wrote the Bible? Lord, Listen, wish. if I would have wrote a Bible, it wouldn't even need a cover. <laughs> it wouldn't be no paragraph at all. Amen. It wouldn't be two pages because the first page wouldn't be full. <laughs> I just have a few words. Do what you want. Amen. That's it. That's it. Do what you want. Amen. That's right. It is the nature of our flesh yeah. to please the flesh. That's right. It is the nature of God to displease the flesh. And that's where the confrontation I come see. in at. Amen. And the Apostle Paul says it this way. I see another law. In my members. In my members in warring against the law of my mind. In other words, here your mind now got some information in it that it never had. Mm -hmm. The word of God now is getting in the mind. That's right. And now the body wants to do another thing, and yet the mind is being taught the will of God. Mm -hmm. So there's a confrontation. There's a another tug of war. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a tug of war yeah. between the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. The mind is telling, obey God. The body's saying, sleep with her. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. The mind is saying, obey God. The body is saying, look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. The mind is saying, obey God. The body is saying, let's go hang out. That's right. Do you see the difference? That's right. Amen. So there's a conflict Conflict. here. And in order for that conflict to be resolved, you've got to present your whole body yeah. as a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Right? The whole thing got to be presented. And you won't be able to present it overnight. No. Mm -mm. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, here a little, there a little, because you got to deny yourself. And my, Listen, I don't want to deny myself. I don't want to do it. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a hypocrite at all. That's right. Pastor Jennings do not want to deny himself. No. The only thing that got me striving to do it, because there's a place called hell that I'm terrified of going to. That's right. I don't care how tough a man is, you let him get near a stove where chicken is cooking. And that grease pop on him. His voice can be as heavy as mine. You don't hear him, ow. <laughs> eh? I don't care how tough that man is, if that house is burning, glory to God, and that house is on fire, and those flames hit him, he ain't gonna be up there, ow, oh, that's hot. <laughs> That fella voice gonna hit so high, ah! He gonna scream. That's right. Like, oh, you are, you are thinking the woman in there. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Come on, son. Now, concerning <laughs> the things whereof you wrote unto me. Glory to God is good. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You see, God put that in there for what reason? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man do what? Let every man have his own wife. And? And let every woman have her own husband. We, wait a minute. Let every man have his own man. Let every woman have her own woman. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own man. And let every woman have her own woman. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Let every man have his own man. Let every woman have his own, her own woman. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. All right. I want this to be good for anyone here that's on the down low. That's right. Anyone watching because you got down low preachers in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. When you preach against sin, they say you don't have love. Where's your love? Where's your compassion, Pastor Jennings? Where's your sympathy? <laughs> I have love. That's why I'm telling you the truth. That's right. Amen. I want you men to stop kissing each other. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Eh? Go ahead. Amen. Amen. I, listen, I, don't, I just can't get it. How can a man look at the, a woman the same way he look, uh, or rather look at a man mm. the same way he look at a woman? Yeah. I mean, here's a woman, you know, the way God made her, curvaceous and whatnot. Us men just like a telephone pole. Whoop! <laughs> And here's men looking at each other. Look at you. Leaning, leaning over. Burned in their lust. <laughs> huh? Leaning over. That's right. Burned. That's why folk hate Pastor Jennings. <laughs> There's television stations now want me off the air, told me I don't have a right to speak against homosexuality. I'm not. God is. God is. I'm just repeating God. That's right. 
So by, by right, every television station, every uh, congressman that's against this, first you got to get God to change his mind, and when you get God to change his mind, then I shut up. Right. Get God to change his mind. Don't write me and cuss me out. Write God. Amen. Huh? Write God. That's right. Start writing. Dear Lord. <laughs> Dear Lord. Dear Lord. You have in the Bible that a man must leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. His wife. Dear Heavenly Father, I desire my own kind. What do you have to say about that? About that. You're going to hell. <laughs> ah! Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You get what I'm talking. Amen. 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 Come on, son. I want to cook you while I have you. Let every because man. Because you got some old folk, too. You got some old folk that are lesbians. And you got some old men that are homosexuals. That's, right. That's why they don't say amen to this kind of preaching. <laughs> You know, sometimes they want to leave, but they're scared to leave because, you know, they break out in the sweat. All of a sudden, they do odorant backslide and everything because <laughs> they feel like they're under pressure. Yeah. And they say, Pastor Jen is a gay basher. No, I preach the Bible. The God made a man for, for a man. man. Take it on, or for a woman. For a woman, for a woman, Pastor. <laughs> for a woman, Pastor. God made a man for a woman, for a woman. and made the woman for, for the, the man. man. That's right. Thank you. I got it right. Got it right. <laughs> got to make sure I don't get hit. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But isn't it amazing? As large as these TV evangelists are, not one. Fred Price, T.D. Snakes, Creflo Old Nickel. Joel Alstein, mm -hmm. the 700 Club, not one. not one. They won't say a word. You know why? Homosexuality brings billions of dollars into your organization. Right. It's all about money. That's right. That's right. And you parents today, yeah. something's wrong with you. That your son can bring another boy home. Mm. Dad, Mom, I want you to meet my friend. I got a mind to get married, and I just want your approval. And you men mm. drop you. You sold your manhood. Yeah. And you come along. Well, son, if that's what you want, congratulations. What kind of grandchildren you going to have? That's right. Where that baby going to come out at? Amen. Am I right? Amen. You grown men sold your manhood. Yeah. Sold. Mothers sold their womanhood. Yeah. Where your daughters can bring another girl home. Yeah. Mom, this is my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. See, when I came up, when a girl say girlfriend, it's just a you know, young girl to hang out with. She's a friend in the neighborhood. Today, no, they wrapped around like two anacondas. Yeah. And society condone it. Yeah. The rappers, they condone it. The celebrity industry condone it. Hollywood condone it. That's why these men that claim they are men, but yet they are Hollywood entertainers. They are sell their manhood for money. And these grown men, next day you know you find them in a movie dressed like a woman. That's right. A man that's a real man won't sell his dignity and dress up like a woman. That's right. Am I right, I say? Amen. Amen. Go ahead. It's a disgrace. Mm. Celebrities sell their manhood yeah. for money. For money. When you loyal to God, you won't sell yourself like a prostitute. That's right. The Hollywood industry is a pimp. Yeah. Grown men, big bodybuilders. Oh, yeah. Putting on blind wigs and lipsticks and earrings and trying to cram their size 18 foot. Hmm. 
in a shoe, walking like they're trying to balance themselves on a balance beam. Amen. And other men saying, man, that's cute. That's an abomination. Abomination. That's right. That's right. You parents, let your sons get dressed up for Halloween looking like a girl. Mm -hmm. Put your mama's wig on and your mama lipstick and your mama shoes and your mama fake fur. Yeah. And your mama costume jewelry. That's right. Little Tom become Thomasine. Hmm. Jack become Jackie. Amen. Sam become Samantha. Yeah. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And every time I preach against this, the program is bleeped. Hmm. Because there, there, there are certain words they say that cannot be said on television, but yet they don't say that to Hollywood. No. They don't say it to Hollywood. No, they don't. Hollywood can say anything and everything. It ain't nothing bleep. That's right. That's so right. viewers, that's why certain, when they hear me get hardcore with the Bible, certain stations don't want me to say a thing, so they bleep it. Mm -hmm. if, they, if it's not bleep, they won't air it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to preach the word of God if the whole program sound like a flatliner. <laughs> I'm going to preach the word of God. Word. Eh? Amen. Thus have you made the commandment of God. For laying aside the commandment of God. Laying aside, the, what, what did they do with God's commandment? In Mark chapter 7, we're at verse 8. Look at what the people have done, brothers and sisters. For laying aside they the commandment of God. They laid aside God's commandment. Ye hold the tradition of men. Now, this is the problem. This is the problem. They have cut, took what God ordered. Mm -hmm and laid it aside. They got rid of it. Yeah. Threw it in the trash. That's right. And when you stand up for God, you say, listen, anytime you stand up for what's right, you're going to pay a price. Yeah. This generation today is hard to find men. Yeah. It's like there's hardly no men being produced on the assembly line. That's right. It's this strange weakness in the air. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Oh, yeah. Strange weakness. Oh, yeah. No board in their back. Mm -hmm. They bow down to anything and everything. That's right. They stand up for trash. That's right. But won't stand up for God. That's right. That's right. They have turned their back on God for a woman. Yeah. They have turned their back on God for money. Oh, yeah. But they won't stand up for God. That's right. And when they see someone standing up for God, they'll turn on him. Oh, yeah. They surprise people to see so many men in this holy way. Because you know, church don't hardly have no men. No. I don't care how large that church is, it's mostly women. Yeah. And a lot of times, the men that are there are there by force from their woman. <laughs> Amen. Honey, I don't want to go there. You don't want to go? <laughs> he almost pouting. She got to drag him in like a baby. So our young generation of brothers, That's right. they don't hardly have a male example. Yeah. Their male example is a rapper or a ball player oh, yeah. who don't see nothing wrong with going both ways. Mm. This is the condition now. That's right. The music industry, both ways. Yeah. Churches now, yeah. both ways. Mm -hmm. Young men, listen, in the book of Titus chapter 2 and at verse 6, young men, likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Look at it. Hmm. You got to exhort these young men to be sober-minded, be stable-minded, have a one-track mind. In all things. How much? In all things. Us men should be able to take a shower in one big room, and all of us should be able to drop the soap and not worry. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Drop the soap, pick it up, and keep talking. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You see the game last night? Yeah, man, the Bulls won. <laughs> Bulls won, yeah, what about the Lakers? I don't know. That's right. All you need is one in there. <laughs> Eyes shifting like a little mouse. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening to the old man? Young men. 
I had somebody write me, well, Pastor Jennings, would you let homosexuals come in, in first church? Yes, we have. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in with your sugar. Come on in. I'm going to preach salt until you convert you. That's right. We won't throw you out. Only way we'll throw you out is if you try to put your lifestyle on somebody, then we'll get a hold of you and put you out. That's right. But if you want to be right and want to be saved, come on in here. Come on in. Come on in here. We'll work on you until all, until all that sugar come out. You may come in clapping like this, but when you go through metamorphosis, eventually you change. Hallelujah. But today, everything is backward now. Today, today they come in clapping like a man, and later on, three years later, He strode the church. Hung around there for a while. Yeah. Three years later. He's a man. man. Switching. That's right. What happened? What happened? What happened? Until the fear of God yeah. get in everybody's house. And the father take his role back as head of the house. That's right. And the mother take her role back, not as a big sister to your daughter, That's but right. her mother teaching her dignity and respect and discipline and teaching her to close her legs. Go ahead. That's Am right. I right, I said? That's right. That's right. You ain't no woman because you have sex. Sex don't make you a woman. No, no. Sex don't make you a man. Amen. You ain't never been a real man or a real woman since you've been born until you obey God. That's right. When you obey God, God will fashion you into a righteous man and to a righteous woman. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Young men? Likewise. That's why, a lot, that's why a lot of these young men want weak preachers. Yeah. Because weak leadership produces Weak people. That's right. Makes them weak, feeble. Feeble. It's like a coach. When I came up in the hood, you know, old heads taught you how to hold your hands. But if you get a coach, you know, and he don't properly teach you, mm -hmm. teach you how to jab, how to take a punch, how to roll off one, mm -hmm. you'll get beat up every time you walk the street. <laughs> yes, you will. The word of God teach you how to take the jab of the scriptures. That's right. This is like a body boxing gospel. Oh, no yes. slap boxing here. Mm -mm. This stuff get all down in you. Rearrange your house. Rearrange your lifestyle. Rearrange your mind. That's right. This mind, we need a new mind. That's right. We need to think different from the way we used to think. Yeah. We need to be detox. All that religious germs and that filth that these no good things that posed as preachers sent by the devil to trick us and lie us and deceive us, all that stuff got to be removed. And sometimes that's hard for people to let false teaching go. Oh, yeah. Because they love Reverend Demon. That's right. That's right. They love Reverend Lucifer. That's right. They love reverend devil. Amen. You got to love God more than you love your wife, more than you love your husband, more than you love your children. Oh, yeah. You must love God above everything under the sun mm -hmm. because the last one who got say over you is not your wife, no. it's not some preacher, and it's not your husband. Right. The last one that got say over you is your creator, and God Almighty is he. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. So we encourage our young men, be stable. That's right. Don't be so unstable, so wishy-washy. Stop being a crowd follower. That's right. Stable. Stable. Sober mind. Sober. Stop Sober. following every piece of leg you see. Amen. Amen. Sober. Did you hear what I said? Young men. Respect the woman. Don't cuss her out. Don't beat her. Yeah. She's not a punching bag. That's right. Respect the woman. You've been living together five, ten years, and all y'all doing is bouncing. Mm. Then you get children. Mm. You're not married. You're leaving a bad example for the child. Yeah. 
Well, Pastor Jens, I got a question. What am I supposed to do? You know, I keep bringing up marriage to him, and we've been together seven years, and he keeps telling me, I'm going to do it. I'm, but he won't do it, Pastor Jennings. I don't want to live like this. Sister, what make you think he's going to marry you if you keep giving up free stuff? Yeah. Amen. You are satisfying his lusts. Yeah. Your body got him preoccupied. Oh, yeah. Marriage is not on his mind. Because you keep giving him free goods. That's right. Shut your house down. That's right. Shut down your body. That's right. And give your body to God. Yeah. Stop living there. He ain't your husband. Amen. Walking around him in your underclothes, cooking like he your husband. Mm -hmm. He's sitting around you with these old boxing drawers. And <laughs> sitting there just talking like y'all married with a child running around. You're raising a child or children, teaching him or her how to shack up. And by your lifestyle, you're telling your children it's all right to live like this. And here I come with the Bible to let you know it's wrong to live that way. That's right. So you choose. You choose. Either keep living the way you are. Fornicating around your children, smoking around your children, drinking around your children. Yeah. The first look at porn that many children get is in the house of their parents. That's right. First shot of whiskey many children get is right in your refrigerator. Amen. First drag on a the cigarette, they stole one of their mamas yeah. or their fathers. Mm -hmm. For ye know what commandments we gave you. Did you hear this? Now in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4 and at verse 2. This is old-fashioned teaching here. That's right. Uh -huh. For you know what commandments we gave you. You by, know what commandment we gave you. By the Lord Jesus. By who? By the Lord Jesus. No, by Geno Genesis. By the Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus said it? By the Lord Jesus. Thank God, I'm clear. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we're starting at verse 2. Apostle Paul said, you know what commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Amen. Everything, have you noticed, brothers and sisters, everything points to God. That's right. Everything points to God. Everything. That's right. That's what makes this message so different from anything in the earth. Mm -hmm. Everything points to God. We are pointing everybody mm -hmm. to God. For this is the will of God. This is God's will. Even your sanctification. For you to be set apart. That ye should For abstain. For you to be set apart. For mm. you to be sanctified. Yeah. Give chapter and verse again. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Now we're at verse 3. This is the will of God. Even your sanctification. For your sanctification. That ye should abstain from fornication. That ye should stop having unmarried sex. That's right. That's right. Who will is it? For this is the will of God. No, Gino Jennings said it. This is the will of God. One woman got so mad at me, she emailed me. She said, I lay with all the men I want. Who you think you are? Mm. Okay, don't faze me. I'm going <laughs> to keep preaching. That's right. You can lay with King Kong if you want. I'm going to keep preaching. <laughs> That's right. Give chapter and verse again. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and we're at verse 3. What am I teaching? Morals, ethics. That's it. A standard. That's right. Our, listen, some of the lessons we give our children is not always when you sit them down and talk. Yeah. Our children learn through observation. Yeah. They watch. They repeat what you say. Yeah. They repeat what you do. They want to beat women because they see their father beat up their mother. That's right. That's right. They want to get drunk because father come in drunk. Yeah. They want to cuss because father want to cuss. How can you chastise your son for cuss him and you cuss him out? Amen. That's right. Mother, how can you tell your daughters to get out these boys' face when Jeff, Bill, Tom, Peter, Jack, Slap, Hap, all of them at your house? Amen. You must live and be an example, a pattern of good works to the children. Now, Grandma, glory <laughs> to God. Amen. Even old mothers now, getting your dress up. Yeah. You want to wear a dress no longer than my jacket. A split in that and an ankle chain on your ankle with a cane. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. You didn't wear fake hair when you was a teenager. You wait till you get in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Fake hair, lipstick, 
mini skirts on grandma. Got her toenails all red. On grandma. Grandma want to wear low riding jeans. Hmm. Grandma. grandma. Hmm. Old heads want to blast your radio in your car, slotch down like a pimp. That's right. Radio blasting with a hearing aid on. <laughs> Go ahead, take God. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Amen. Get right, world. Amen. When I came up, they used to sing an old song in church. Get right, church, and let's go home. Let's go Get home. right, church, and let's... Now the church all got wrong. Nobody wanted to go home unless they go to hell. That's right. That's why it's hard for young, young folks to look at this stuff being preached. They look at me like, uh, like I'm somebody from outer space. <laughs> they be like, look at what he's saying. <laughs> Now, what I'm saying is a lot of just common sense. That's true. But who would have thought we're living in a time where it's a sin to some people to have common sense? Yeah. Are you listening? That's right. Here, you brothers out here, you got your wife, and your wife walk the street half naked. She go to church half naked, clothes dressed this big, blouse that big. And you, you want to fight men in the street from whistling at your wife. You don't want to let her come out that way. That's right. You want to fight somebody, you go back home and get a stick and crack your own self over the head. <laughs> Amen. You don't want to let her come out that way. Yeah. You don't want to let her show up breast in the street. So, sister, I ask you, why do you think it's nothing wrong with your behind shown in public, your birth canal oh, in hey. public, your breasts in public, and you men, why is it you want to dress with in tight pants like you's a girl. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I know. It's something. It's Father's something. out with his pants hanging down. Mm -hmm. Pants hanging down, hat thrown to the side, earring in his ear. Yeah. And he's got his little son, pants hanging down, That's fake right. Timberlands on. <laughs> Hat to his side. Amen. And you give your son the title, not my son. This is my little dog here. That's right. Giving him a dirty mentality. Yeah. You're calling your son dog. That means he's a trash eater. Yeah. He's a filth lover. Yeah. Or you call your son, that's my pimp. That means he's a womanizer. That's right. Who would have thought we live today where young men were answered to the call of dog or pimp? Amen. How in the world is that such a complimentary title? Yeah. Dog or pimp? pimp? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Teach your son to be a young man. That's right. Teach your son to be a gentleman. Teach your son to respect women. Yeah. Most of all, teach your son to respect God, right. to respect himself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This type of cheap teaching, this type of teaching have left church years ago. Years ago. Only thing the church teach now is money. Yeah. God got a miracle with your name on it. God ain't got nothing with your name on it. Amen. The only name that you need is the name of Jesus Christ because your name ain't good enough. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I was taught to touch it and claim it. You was taught a lie. Amen. God ain't never told you to touch and claim nothing. nothing. Look how foolish these preachers made you. You go to a Pontiac dealer with no money, touch a car, and then somebody else drive off with it. Amen. Preacher, make a sucker out of you. Oh, yeah. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back. Everything in Texas and the whole world must come on back to God before God come. That's right. We that had strict parents, we've been told we got to be in the house a certain time, and that father's at work, hmm. and we'll sneak out, and we'll be looking up the corner. Boy, the moment we, we, we know our father's walk, hmm. the moment we see that silhouette, that shadow coming down the street, we take off in the house. Sometimes our brothers be like, you better come on back in the house. Why? The judge is coming. The judge is coming. And because we respect the authority.
authority of father and mother, we had to submit ourselves. Today, society will curse God, curse the name of God with a stone cold conscience. Their conscience not phased, conscience not moved whatsoever. God this, God that, God the other. One, one man wrote me and said, Jesus ain't nothing to me. Mm. You movie actors and movie entertainers that watch us. You sell out for money until they, they, even your director will give you a script that make you cuss God. That's right. Make you call God an MF. Make you call God a SOB. Make you call God something that he's not. You're blaspheming. That's right. You get rich by blasphemy. blasphemy. You get a three and four and 20 and 30 and 50 million dollar contract Amen. by blasphemy. Yes. And that money gonna stare in your face yes, you when you meet God That's and you will never get into the kingdom of God. Amen. Never get in. Amen. I'm warning you. Yeah. Glory to God, before I die, I'm going to warn creation. And they have turned unto me the back. Do you hear the book of Isaiah? In the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, I beg your pardon. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 33. Jeremiah 32, 33 says. And they have turned unto me the they back. They have turned. Look how God, look at the way they treat God. That's right. Turn they back on you. Listen, it's an act of mercy. Anytime you turn your back on God and God still have you living, they give you time to come back to him. That's He's right. giving you time to show your face again. That's right. They have what? They have turned unto me the back. They have turned unto God the back. And not the face. I'm not turning my back to God. I want God's face to shine on me. That's right. Amen. I, everything I do, I want to have God mercy. That's right. I don't want hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't want God to cut me off in judgment. Amen. So regardless of whether I want to obey him or not, if I struggle with something, I got to look to heaven Go and ask God, help me come up. Hallelujah. Thanks. Right. Hallelujah. Glory That's to God. Right. Help me to come up to it. That's right. That's what you got to do, Texas. Go Whatever you're struggling with, ask God. Help Go me to stop it. Help me to lay it down. That's and right. Help me to abstain. That's help right. me to pull it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me to pull it off. Amen. Hey! Amen. Glory right, to God. That's what everybody got to do. That's right. Do you hear what he said? And they have turned unto me the back. Don't you turn your back on God. And not the face. It's going to be hard living holy. Anyone tell you it'll be easy, they lie. It's going to be hard. Oh, it's going to be hard if that woman loved her pants, it's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. It may be hard for her to throw away her pants. That's right. Sure. That's right. That's the way it was with my sister, my second oldest sister. That girl loved her jeans. <laughs> loved them. Yeah. Now you couldn't pay her to step into a pair of jeans. Wonderful. So that's why I tell an individual got to run at their own pace. Yeah. It's my job to keep preaching, mm -hmm. and it's your job to keep making adjustments. That's right. Huh? That's right. I remember years ago, one of my brothers, a good brother, Brother Lamar, sometimes we call him L. I mean, when he was in at our old, our old headquarters on Frankfurt Avenue, he had long dreadlocks. I mean, his dreadlocks was long. They came almost down to his elbows. And I would preach against men with long hair and everything else. Lamar would sit on the front row and say, amen. <laughs> That's right, Pastor Jennings. Preach it. Nodding his head, his dreadlocks just shaking. Preach it, Pastor Jennings. <laughs> Every time, sit right on the front row. He would sit in the back, front row with his Bible, and read it. And he'd be like, that's the truth right there. <laughs> that's the truth. I did not go to Lamar and say, look, man, when you going to cut your hair? I don't do that. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That's not the way you do it. You preach the word of God and then let God deal with the heart. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Let God deal with the heart. That's right. When God deal with your heart, you won't make a change to satisfy people. Amen. You'll make that change to satisfy God. Amen. Now do you get what I'm telling you? Amen. One day Lamar came to church, had all his hair cut to a hustler, <laughs> and then came to spoke to me. I didn't know who he was. Mm. He said, greetings, Pastor Jennings. I said, greetings, brother. I thought he was a guest. And I'm about to walk away. He said, wait a minute, PJ, it's me. I said, you who? <laughs> he said, it's me, Lamar, dreadlocks. I said, what happened? He said, I waked up. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. I, 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 I teach this because 
when we start the work down here, you're going to find people coming in. You're going to find women coming in still with pants on, earrings, bareheaded and everything. Don't bother them. That's right. Don't say nothing to them. That's right. They got to move at their own pace. When God helped them to overcome it, then they'll overcome it with the greatest of ease. I remember there was a sister. Wonderful. All right, listen. Don't bother them. Don't look down on them. Don't, don't work on yourself. That's it. Yeah. That's right. You work on yourself, and God will work on them. That's right. I remember I had a sister from South Africa, a uh, white, bro white couple. Uh, brother, and I forgot his first name, Brian. Brian and Christine. Came from Johannesburg. And Brian was, used to be a bouncer. And he used to be racist to the core. And he said, it just so happened one day he had a green card and came to America and saw me on television. When he saw me on television, he said for the first time in his life, he cried like a baby. That old bigot spirit was cast out of him. He went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Christine, wonderful sweet sister, she would come to church clean, Ed wouldn't miss no service in a pantsuit. That's right. Clean. Christine knew it was wrong and everything. I never bothered her. The mothers in the church never bothered her. Why? If 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 they gonna take if a person gonna take off something because you said something when they leave church, they are gonna put it right back on. Right. You know why? The heart haven't changed yet. That's right. But when you get that heart to change. They're going to be the in here the same way they're out there. That's right. So one day, Christine heard me preach against it. She was just like Lamar. She said, amen, Pastor Jenny. She'll stand up and clap. Thank God for you, Pastor Jenny. Thank God for you. <laughs> one day, Christine came to church. Her dress was so long, she was stepping on it. <laughs> she said, Pastor Jenny, God finally blessed me to get over that hurdle. Oh, she, said, I, she said it was a long time, and it was many years, but she would not stop coming to church. She would right. be there all the time until the word of God broke her down. That's right. What I'm teaching you is this. Don't you try to do God's job. Let God do it, because when he do it, it's done the best. Amen. Ah! Amen. That's why I don't, I don't go to people personally, you know, take off this, take off that, stop this, stop that. No, 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 I don't know. I preach the word of God. Preach the word. My job is to preach it, and your job is to sit in judgment on yourself and ask God to give you the strength to help you to overcome. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. This is what you got to ask God. Do you hear this? In Psalms 51 and at verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. A clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. You see, the spirit we have ain't no good. It's mm -hmm. a wrong spirit. That's right. But you want a right spirit. When you get a right spirit, you will repent of your sins. And you won't be in a judgment seat. You yeah. see, you may be up to something that somebody else is not up to. Yeah. Don't you judge them. That's right. You pray for them. That's right. Because even though they may not be up to something and you are, there's still something else you ain't up to. Yeah. Is that right? Amen. Give chapter and verse again. Psalms 51 and at verse 10. What the Holy Ghost said. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Who well, give me the correct time, brother, because our next session is at 5 o'clock. Do what? Create in me a clean heart, O God. 137. Creating me a, cr a clean heart. This is what all of us should want. Is that right? That's right. Creating me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within and me. And renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. When you want a right spirit, you will repent of your sins, Houston, 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 and the world. You will repent of your sins, and you will go down in the water in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus Christ. And you will seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, and he'll give you that. Oh, yeah. And you'll take your time and sit under the teaching of holiness. Mm -hmm. And, brother, it will change you into a better man and a better woman. That's right. You will go through what people call metamorphosis to better understand it. Think of the caterpillar. A caterpillar don't move the same way as a bird. Mm -hmm. It's very slow. But then the caterpillar separates itself 
at a time. Spins the silk and be in a cocoon. And that caterpillar is in that cocoon whatever time that its creator have appointed. Absolutely. In that cocoon, in that cocoon, the caterpillar go through changes. Is that right? Amen. The caterpillar go through changes and then at the appointed time of the Lord of creation, the caterpillar break out of its cocoon. Now it got a new name That's right. and a new look. That's right. And a new behavior pattern. Yeah. It no longer crawl on its belly. Now it's elevated into the heavens. That's right. It's no longer like the other caterpillars. Now it even got a different name. Yeah. Call a butterfly. Yeah. So now you're crawling on your belly in sin, but through teaching, you are going through metamorphosis change. change. And at the right time, you know when that caterpillar go to the cocoon, sometimes you're gonna find yourself going to your cocoon. It's called a secret closet. That's right. Sometimes you may have to separate yourself from people. Yeah. Sometimes to get, your, to get you to stop doing and behaving certain ways, you're going to have to separate yourself from certain people, Amen. certain atmosphere, yeah. certain places. Yeah. Because sometimes it is the people that you're around, the atmosphere and the places you go to that keep you in that mental bondage of the same behavior. That's right. Am I right? Amen. Change, Change. is a necessity. Oh, yeah. And the first stage or approach to change is repentance. Repentance. Repentance is not only the acknowledgement of what I am, but I'm also going before God to repent for not only what I am, but for the way I am. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Change. Change. Take your time. Learn the word of God. That's right. You that are here that have not obeyed God, the same thing they done last night, you must do right away before the Lord come for you. That's right. The Bible says in Acts 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Time for you to be sorry about your sinful ways, Mr. Man, Miss Woman, Mr. and Mrs. Thing. They had a song in the 70s. Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you are? <laughs> and that's the way many folks are. Some of you think you're saved. Okay, if you bow your head and raise your hands at some church, you ain't saved. No. The Bible ain't never taught you to bow your head and raise your hands. The Bible ain't never taught it been sprinkled in the Catholic Church. The Bible ain't never told you be sprinkled in nobody's church. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I joined the church. The Bible ain't never told you to join the church. Amen. You got to be born into God's church. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I was baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't say be baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He said do it in the name mm -hmm. of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right. How many times that I have made this example. If I tell you do something in my name, you're not going to say father, son, and husband. Mm. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband. But if I tell you do something in my name, you're going to call my name Jennings. That's right. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus, and he's the Christ. Mm -hmm. Everybody that was baptized and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you were baptized wrong. Oh. And, 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 and the preacher himself got to be baptized over. That's right. The Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. But there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the world, every politician, every Democrat, every Republican, every black, white, yellow, brown human being, man or woman, must repent of repent. all your evil. That's right. And be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of sins. To get your sins washed away, you must be baptized. Baptized. In the Pastor Jen, I was baptized by a Baptist church. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You got wet in the Baptist church. That's right. Baptist church, you never baptized no one right since the Baptist church been on the earth. Amen. You got to get it just like Jesus gave it to his apostles. That's right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remission of sins. Remission means removal. In order to get your sins removed or washed away, you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Until the Bible says mm -hmm. in the book of Acts, why tarriest thou? Right. Meaning, why wait? Arise. And be baptized, calling upon the name of the Lord. 
That's right. If anybody want to be right with God today and really mean to go back with God, don't want to go to hell, want to be right with God, want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and get on God's side, stand on your feet. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, turn around and see them two standing back there. Go back there where they are. We baptized 91 last night. Glory to God. Yeah, this, is, this is truly the hand of the Most High. All of you that want to be baptized, go on. You, this is your opportunity to get right. The truth of God is truly in Houston. We're going to start a new work here, bless God, and we're going to get on the ball quick so everybody will get a chance to pack up from the devil's church and walk with the word of God so we can make this resurrection together. Yeah. Huh? Eh? Yeah. Amen. Look at here. Look how God is working. Hallelujah to God Almighty. Hallelujah. All right. All right, then just, just let them know where it's at. Uh, where's Dish? Where's Brother Dish at? All right, get yourself together. Marcus, get yourself together. I'll be right out. We got a different pool where we're baptizing at. Get yourself together. I'll be right out to make sure everything is done right. Mm. Hey Amen. We'll have you two out there. Get it done right. Glory to God. 91. By the time we're going to be done, it may be end up being about 120 or 130 something. Only God Almighty can pull off something so beautiful like this. Yeah. Only God can do it. I want to welcome Houston, Texas to, to, to the truth of God family. Hallelujah. Amen. Houston, Texas. Yeah, we, we welcome you to the truth of God family. We're looking to start the Houston First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ right here where the word of God is preached. Mm -hmm. eh? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, I have my secretary find a place that we can temporarily rent and start gathering you together. And uh, in fact, I'm, uh, and I'm, I'll tell you what you do, Houston. I need your help. So you kind of check around to some community centers as well for me. And uh, if you find any information, contact my secretary, Sister Cindy Rollins. Amen. Don't, 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 don't. I'm, I don't want to rent a church because sometimes preachers, you know, they may get upset about what I preach and close the doors. You know, but uh, we have found a community center or even a hotel room. In fact, I'm going to have, I'm going to have my secretary talk to these people. Mm -hmm. So can I rent this room? Amen. Amen. So can I rent this room? Mm -hmm. I apologize for not being a millionaire. I'm sorry I'm not rich. If I was rich, I wouldn't even left town without buying a church. No, you wouldn't have. I would have bought a church and hired contractors on the spot. That's right. Have it all done and dedicated by January. That's right. Amen. I, only, only, God, only God can give you a love for the soul of people. Amen. That's the only thing that has me traveling like I am. God willing, in two weeks, we'll be in Sacramento, California. California if the flames don't go there. <laughs> Amen. But when we go there, we got to have a face mask on because the smoke have came all the way in Sacramento like a cloud. Wow. Amen. And we already, I haven't even been there yet. People don't watch us over YouTube. And my minister that is there have baptized already over 128 people. Mm. And I haven't even got there yet. <laughs> haven't got there yet. My minister, Vincent Santana, very good brother, hard-working brother. Amen. Heard from another, it, it's just so many preachers. There's a lot of brothers that's reaching me out of Mexico. A whole lot of them coming out of these fake so-called holy Pentecostal. And now that I'm, I mean, they're coming from all over the place, wanting to be right, and I want them to be right. So uh, when we go to uh, Sacramento, we gotta, you got to pack your face mask. You got to have it before you leave the city. Amen. They said it's everything, the way the wind is blowing, is like a fog, just all over. Burning eyes, burning lungs. If I didn't love the soul of men, you think I would go there? Uh -uh. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Who walk into flame to save you? <laughs> Who walk into flame to save you? That's right. 
We'll be going to Sacramento in two weeks, God willing. We also have a uh, Mongolian preacher who came to walk with the word of God all from Mongolia. Mm. Got an all-Mongolian congregation. He was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He came to the meeting when I was in Chicago, heard the word of God. Him and his whole house went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. So all my extended family here in Houston, I want you to get in prayer mode. Start praying for the success. Well, the success of the work of the Lord is already taking place. But pray that God bless us when we want to work together and uh, get things accomplished down in this wicked city until the devil know that the <laughs> truth of God is in town. The devil's going to know it. Uh, we want to find a television station here local so we can blast the city, shoot it from the air. <laughs> Amen. Shoot it from the air. I had some people wrote me from Dallas who was under T.D. Jakes. Heard the word of God, left T.D. Jakes, went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what I want to do with, with Joel Alstein. I want to turn over all of Joel Alstein cotton candy stands. <laughs> all his cotton candy stands, all them cotton candies he's giving out. I want to turn it over like Jesus turned over the tables. That's right. I want people to get right. All right, we're going to take a break, let you go. Come on back at 5 o'clock. Don't miss it. Come on back at 5 o'clock in the concluding services. Amen. And, uh, and we'll wrap this beautiful two-day meeting up. Come on back at 5 o'clock. Go get you something to eat. If I don't get a chance to shake your hand, please don't take it personal. I want to get out there and make sure, because I'm training these two brothers to baptize. Amen. I did practically all the baptizing last night. Out, outside in that rain, Brother Williams, he went out there, and his, his back is messed up and whatnot. He, and uh, so I told him, come on, get on out the water. And I was exhausted, and when I was preaching, I, I was damp, so my pores was open. And so I got out there in that water, and, and uh, I'm an experienced baptizer. There was one fella I baptized, brother, he, he looked like a lumberjack, he was so big. <laughs> he stepped down that water, crossed his hands, and looked at me. Or did God, but he went down, <laughs> went down and came on up. So 91 went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Houston, H Houston, I'm telling you right now, Houston is going to be so far in baptism, the largest catch in one city. That's right. That's right. In one city. I went, to, I went to Detroit, we baptized 102 days. Houston got 91 in one night. And one night you got 91. And you, all, and you already passed Detroit. Amen. So, and in the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us, we literally, every place we go, if I use the term, have an instant congregation. Because people are waking up by thousands. They are tired of being lied to. They've been listening to the program. The program is educating them. They are understanding now the Bible better than they ever did. Does it hurt? Yes, it hurt. But don't you let the devil make you run from the word of God. You're going to struggle with some stuff. It's going to be hard on a lot of things. Your family and friends going to call you all type of names. But when it come to God, man up and woman up. Give yourself to God and God only. Let us all stand. We'll come back at 5 o'clock. Under him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, say amen. amen. All right, family, God willing, we'll see you at 5 o'clock. Uh, I will try to get everybody hand then. I want to get out there at this baptism so we can monitor everything. All right, God bless you.